In this video, we will be looking at the Octomono slider that comes included uh, with the Octomono app, rather the content slider. So let's start by dropping an element on the page and access the dashboard. Inside of the dashboard, we will select our content slider and we'll have a look at the available options. On the left side, you can see the global settings, which include slider navigation and global dimensions, as well as functionality of your slider. And to manage each, each slide independently, you would have to click on the manage slide option. And when hovering then you can see that each of the slides will have a settings tab available to it. You can also re, uh, rearrange the slides if you want to with the grab handle here at the top. You can delete any slide inside of your slider by deleting it. Remember that when deleting a slide that uh, the content that you might have added previously within the Weebly editor will be deleted as well and there is absolutely no way of retrieving it. So if you do remove a slide within your slider, and which includes some content that you would have wanted to reuse, make sure to prior uh, remove, LA remove, move that content outside of the specific slide you will you are about to delete. So now let's have a look first at the uh, global settings here. The slider can have some navigation dots, which you can see are located here under our slider. You can specify if those dots are just switched off or switched on. Whenever switched on, you can select whether the, to have your dots under the slider or on top of the slider. On top of the slider, they will be located at the bottom as well, but on top of your actual slider. We'll leave ours under the slider here. You can give an accent color to your dots. So if you want to have them to a greenish color, you just do it like that. <coughs> Sorry. The arrow is the same thing. You can uh, turn off arrows. And for now you can see that the arrows are only appearing whenever hovering your slider. In case you want them to be visible at all times, you just toggle on this setting here, arrows visible at all times, and then the arrows will remain visible. You can increase, decrease the size of your arrows by, by changing the value of the arrow size. So ours, for example, to 35. And if you want to make them round, you can set them to a large number of pixels. So the border radius, radius will become round. In here as well, again, you can change the color as well as the color of the arrow and the background color for a hover state. For dimensions, you can specify a minimum height if that's necessary. Those will be applied to the entire slider, of course. And the slide the slider itself will depend on the content that will be added to your slider uh, once in the Weebly editor. But let's say, for example, you will only have like a small title in each slide, for example, and you still want to have like a, a large, a high, a tall slider, then you would have to increase this number, of course. Under functionality, you have the option to setting your slider to infinite loop or to set it to stop at the end. Whenever you set it to stop at the end, you will see that there is no way to go from our first slide to our last slide directly. And whenever arriving to the last slide, we are not able to go again to our first slide directly. Whenever you remove this, whenever you activate the infinite loop, it will just nicely loop through a slider whenever arriving to the last slide. It will just keep sliding to the first slide and so on. You can of course uh, switch on autoplay, specify the autoplay speed, which means that the amount of uh, seconds it would have to do, a slide would have to remain visible before animating to the next slide. This value is in milliseconds, so if you set this to 3000, which would mean three seconds of uh, slide visibility. Then you can also modify the transition speed where you have slow, which would be a slow transition and fast, which would be a fast transition. So whenever you click on it, you're not really going to appreciate it here because we have all the same color, but that's how it works. You can also set your slider to a partial slider. <clears throat> you can see that actually in a partial slider, a part of the previous and next slide will become visible. Do note, however, that there might be some difference uh, in the Octomono dashboard and between your actual Weebly editor and live site. And the correct one is the Weebly editor and the live site. For example, here as you're using a partial slider, 
the use spacing between those slides has been toggled off and yet here we do see some spacing that spacing will be removed if you select that thing if you select the use partial slider if you want to have some spacing then you would have to toggle it on okay so now let's have a quick look at the managing the slides itself you have these uh, as said previously these settings bar that will become available you also have an option to copy an existing slide or to remove an existing slide the copy element you can also firstly you can include a new slide that will be appended at the end of the slide you can move around the slide of course so if the slide needed to be the first one you can drop it here in the first one so why have the copy option well for example if you want to have mm, the exact same uh, settings for each slide so we're gonna have a look at this so if for example you each slide of you needs a border and you also want each slide to have a border radius something like that instead of doing it and applying it manually to each slide independently you just style first one slide and then you just copy that specific slide I'm going to delete this one okay so looking back to the settings you can as said before select a background color for your slide for each slide independently or you can specify a background image whenever selecting a background image you will have an upload uh, background image that you can upload an input field here you can uh, align that image or position it rather over the x-axis which would be from the left to the right where you can do it left center or right and the y-axis where you can do it from the top center or bottom uh, we previously already set a border to the slide you can also apply borders independently if you want if you only want to have a border at the top or maybe border at the top and border at the right but then not at the at the center and so forth you can include these values independently so for example this slide now will have a 10 pixel border at the top where you can also change the color of course but we are not going to be using any borders so we'll toggle this off border radius the same we said that before we said that to 10 and now you can see that everything is every corner of our slide has a 10 pixel uh, border radius but you can also set this individually for each corner so the top left now you can see that this border radius of 20 pixels was only applied to the top left of our slide and then you can do maybe something like this 30 and now you can see that our slide will have a border radius at the top left and at the bottom right in this case we're not going to use any border radius either and we're going to set this value to zero for our dimensions tab we have the possibility of including a horizontal padding the horizontal padding will separate your inner content from the left and the right side and a vertical padding will do the same but from the top and the bottom inside of your slide you can also align your content so you can align it to the bottom center or top each slide can have a, an animation this is a minimum animation and will be applied to all the content uh, added inside the specific slide where you can slide in animation from the top the bottom the left or the right let's uh, leave this for example to the top and then i think we're happy with our slide we got three slides let's set for example another color to that last one to distinguish better something like that for example click on save <clears throat> and now we're taking back to our weebly editor where we can see our slider so let's start by dropping an element and you should see up oh, it animating in so now let's call this for example slide one increase with the size and center it this is our second slide if the editor loads fine we can add our content here and go to the last slide which is slide three obviously slide three just like that 
Now we're going to have a look at our live side as well. And see if our slider works. Did some testing here before. And you can see that our content was animating in. This is our second slide, third slide, and the animation. So what you might have noticed, for example, is that there is no option of setting this slider to full width. This is, however, possible by combining two elements. By using the blocks element, you could set your slider to full width. So uh, the way to do that is you drop another element on the page, access the dashboard, and now instead of choosing the content slider, you would have to choose the blocks element. We will set our parent block, which is the other width, to full width, just like that. Also, there is a tutorial available about this blocks element as well. So if you have some doubts or whatever, do please check this one out as well. And whenever we set this parent to full width, you will see that there is an option of setting a max width for our inner width. Let's set this to a really large number, like 10,000, for example. And now you will see that there is still some spacing remain, that some space remains here on the left and the right. This is caused by this horizontal padding. So let's set it to zero, and now you will see that it touches the edge. We'll remove the border, setting it to zero. And while not necessary, because our slider is going to take up the thing, we're also going to remove the background. You can do this easily by dragging the opacity slider here all the way to the left, so it will become opaque. The only thing we can do now as well is remove the opacity from our parent block so that there is no other color available than our slider will be. And in the dimension step, we also need to set our horizontal padding to zero, which we already did, but we also need to modify actually the horizontal padding of our inner content because our inner content also has some. So we go to the dimension step and you can see that it's been set to 15. So we can set this value to zero as well. So now when we save our blocks element and go back to the WebD editor, we should be able to drop in our slider and should it should become full width. So let's have a look at that. And you can see the slider has become full width. So let's have a quick look again at the live side to check if the slider is full width. And yes, our slider has become full width. You can see here in this example that the animation is happening real fast whenever you click through your slides. Let's set it, for example, to a, a normal speed. You see it was being set to fast, let's say to normal. Just like that. Publish our, our page again. And I think that this animation speed is nicer than the really fast one. You can set it even slower by specifying the slow one. 